I really don't know what I was doing when I bought this figure. It was a decision between him, this use drone, one of the Transformers Headmasters reissues, or Eraser. In the end, I decided for this mold, and at the time I brought it over to a place where I stayed during my trip to the US. I'll be sorry for the people that like this mold, but it sucks ass, and very much. In today's video, I will review the sparkle spot from the exclusive Netflix line War for Cybertron that was seen in Walmart some years ago, and tell you why I think this figure sucks. This figure, as I said earlier, was part of the Netflix War for Cybertron line exclusive for Walmart, which right now is expensive as heck. Just look at how much someone is asking for Hot Link. Well, it has its excuse of being an exclusive figure for being sold to that high price on the internet. But thinking about it, it's actually Cosmos all over again. It's not the same case for the Sparkless bot, maybe because of how common this mold is. The same case goes with the Decius drone and the Sparkless Seeker, which are two of the most common molds that were sold in the line. Let me give you some recent examples. The most recent use for the Decius or Ironhide mold is the GK2 Guard, which I actually own. And tell you that despite his flaws he's a good figure. Now for the case of the Sparkless Seeker, it was the premium finish Starscream and also his art glass repaint. And now for the Sparkless bot, the newest ritual it had, cause it's not a repaint, is the silver streak from the Legacy Wars Worthy line that I mentioned earlier, which didn't sold well in my country. The main problem with figures like this is the syndrome known as mold degradation, in which if a mold is used too many times for different figures can lead to problems like loose joints and such. Sadly mine was victim of that syndrome and now it can't even stand up properly without looking like his legs are killing him, which almost made me forgot about another issue with the figure being hard to pose thanks to the clear plastic joints of his knees. What I do like about the figure is the quality of the paint. The rust on the figure looks so good that even if it scratches, you wouldn't notice it at first. The sculpting on the figure is also great, the face has some great detail and the interior of his car doors are actually sculpted. Talking again about the head sculpt, I do like the paint they use for his eyes, with that intense tone of purple which tells you that this guy may have been infused with with dark energy and turned into a zombie. The sparklers are meant to be zombies in the world of the Transformers, which are seen like this. Moving away from the figure's lore, this figure presents some good poseability. Get is on a ball joint, he's got full poseability on his arms with hinge joints, rotation of his hands, arms, and shoulders. He has a waist swivel, full poseability on his legs, and his feet have some decent pivots. His poseability is good, but it could have been better if his feet didn't have issues with his loose joints. For accessories, he has these shoulder cannons which can be attached to one another to form a bigger gun. In terms of size, here we have Airwave, DK2 Guard, Eraser, and Ratchet. Alright, in terms of transformation, well, his transformation is really simple. It's just like his masterpiece or the other Prowl barricades figures, just like that. Uh, <laughs> looks like I am halfway at it because, first of all, you have to fold in the legs but before doing that you have to untap his chest pull it up move this up and hide inside the front part of the car and his chest all right now move this in yes hinge the his legs inwards and then I think it was I don't remember if it was closing the doors first and for the final steps just moving his rotate right here rotate the shoulders move them inwards fold the Fold his shoulders like this. Both his weapons are going to go right here. And there we go. The Cybertron and police car mode is quite interesting. I like how it looks. The detail on its windows is very good. I like how it tries to resemble a futuristic sports car used by a most futuristic police officer. But sadly, the car's aesthetics and how good the design of the car is doesn't move away the fact of how crappy I think this figure is. The transformation for this guy is actually too simplistic and boring at the same time. I know this is also like it resembles a transformation for the masterpiece 
this and such, but I really didn't thought a figure would make me feel that disappointed at all. The size of the car mode is pretty good actually for the Lux class. The buffer cells for car modes are mostly pretty large. Here I have Studio Series Brawn, Studio Series Ratchet, Deluxe Barricade, Kingdom Warpath, Legacy Bulkhead, Deluxe Brawl, Studio Series Rock Kick, and Crossover's War Machine. So yeah, this is the end of the review. If you like this video, leave a like, comment down below your opinion on this figure, follow me on my social medias, and this is about review and we will see you again soon.